Ve... So I think that we can start. We have uh, over uh, 30 people registered and uh, we are ready for uh, uh, presentation. Uh, please note that this webinar is recording. So after the end of the presentation, after the end of the webinar, we will put the uh, webinar online and uh, uh, all participants will have option to see uh, all presentation and after the webinar we will send uh, uh, email and the uh, location of all presentation that uh, presenters can uh, download and uh, see uh, directly uh, during the webinar uh, attendees can ask questions and uh, uh, I will uh, uh, if it's question during the presentation, I will uh, prepare the question uh, and ask uh, presenters after the presentation. And at the end of the, our uh, program, uh, we will, uh, attendees will have uh, opportunity to ask uh, questions. So we'll have like 10 or to 15 minutes for the questions and answers after the end of uh, uh, set of the presentation. Uh, so good morning to everyone. Uh, my name is Boris Josic and I'm coming from Center of Technology Transfer. Uh, I'm the coordinator of uh, ZEV Innovation Project. And the first presentation will uh, show you, uh, will present you a project and the uh, project idea and uh, pa partners. And after my presentation, all other partners uh, in the project will present themselves and present the role in the, in the project. Uh, the ZEV Innovation Project is the short name of the Strengthening Transnational Cooperation, Knowledge and Technology Transfer in Development of Electric Vessels and Fostering Innovation in SMEs. Uh, if you just read uh, the title of, of our project, you will see that we are covering the whole, uh, a very large field, but uh, we are focusing uh, on the electric vessels and uh, zero emission vessels. Uh, I will try to go quickly through to give you introduction to the project uh, and uh, today uh, webinar with uh, short uh, six uh, short uh, pre presentation and topics uh, about the project. So project is funded by EA and Norway Grant Fund for Regional Cooperation. Uh, the fund recognizes uh, regional cross-border uh, and transnational cooperation as a key driver to find shared solutions to these issues. And because of this, uh, we uh, found that this project is very good for our idea and we applied for this, uh, uh, for, for this program. Uh, we received uh, this year positive evaluation and the project started uh, from the 1st of July. Uh, total length of the project is 43 months, uh, so we are ending in 2024. Uh, application for the project started in the 2018. The project was two stage, first stage in 2018, the second stage and the final stage in 2019 and results in 2020. Uh, project uh, is uh, consists of uh, pa five partners, from uh, uh, two from Croatia, two, uh, two from uh, Poland and one from Norway. Uh, and two from Norway, one from Poland, sorry. Uh, and the uh, total budget uh, is uh, around 1.6 uh, million and uh, this uh, received from, the, from this uh, grant. Uh, some of the partners are receiving 100% and some of the partners need to uh, receiving only 75% because they are private companies. Uh, in total, we have uh, five project partners. Uh, Center of Technology Transfer is the lead partner. Uh, we are uh, based in uh, Zagreb, Croatia. Uh, in the project, we have uh, two beneficiary partners, uh, which are Baltic Sea and Space Cluster in the Poland and uh, Innovacija i Razvoj uh, from uh, Croatia. And we have two expertise partners coming from the Norway, OCAP, uh, uh, specialist in the technology and the Vinco Innovation specialist in, in the in, uh, in the uh, innovation. Uh, each of these partners are responsible for one work package and today they will present uh, the role in the work package, uh, what we want to achieve in that work package and what is the idea 
and what the what partners offer during uh, in this project. Uh, just short introduction about uh, CTT uh, is a company founded in 1996 by the University of Zagreb, Faculty of Mechanical Engineering and Naval Architecture. Uh, faculty is uh, still 100% owner of the of the company, and uh, uh, our strategic purpose during the funding uh, in the process of the funding was to connect science and economy, to use uh, laboratories uh, laboratories from the faculty, and to help uh, uh, to uh, together connect uh, scientists working on the faculty and the laboratory with uh, private companies in uh, Croatia and worldwide. Uh, to enhance the competitiveness of Croatian industry uh, by join uh, by together working on the different project, uh, different innovation, and to strike the role of uh, FSB in this process because uh, there is a, a lot of uh, room for the cooperation and to jointly work on the development of uh, new projects. Uh, we have uh, two main activities at the moment, uh, to transfer technology into, econo into economy and incubation and acceleration of uh, entrepreneurial ide ideas. Uh, transfer of knowledge uh, by projects implemented by uh, people working in the, in the, in the CTT, uh, professors from the faculty, and uh, we are trying to connect uh, companies with the uh, faculty. We have also a lifelong learning uh, uh, process program uh, where we present, uh, where we organize several uh, conferences and seminars every year. Uh, and uh, presenters on these conferences and seminars are professors from the faculty. Uh, we also have incubation of startup and spin off company in uh, our premises. And we also working uh, with the student incubator. So if uh, there is interest for the incubation, uh, please contact and we will try and we will see uh, about the possibilities. Uh, what was the idea and the context uh, about uh, behind this writing of this project? And when we started uh, in 2018, uh, when, we, uh, when we started to, to look what is a good idea for innovation and where we have the potential, we saw this uh, waterborne transport uh, as a promising, uh, promising area for the implementing different innovation because the uh, this sector is uh, huge. Uh, it uh, have unique technologies and fuels, special operating environment, and a lot of regulation. Uh, for, uh, for, furthermore, this sector is traditionally important industry for the European economy. And as you can see, partners from Croatia and Norway and Poland is traditionally a shipbuilding country with a lot of uh, big shipyards, small companies uh, working in this sector. And we saw uh, this as our opportunity to implement uh, our pro project. Uh, what are the specific challenges of waterborne transport sector? So one of the biggest challenges is to de decarbonize this uh, sector. And in 2018, uh, we found out that uh, ships entering EU ports emit almost 30% uh, of total EU transport emissions. So this number is very huge. Uh, and then we find out that if it's nothing uh, done, uh, this uh, emission uh, planned to increase between 50 and 250 percent until 2050. So we saw this as our opportunity and we say, okay, we'll go in this sector. Uh, as I said, there is a challenge to cut pollution. Uh, new technology are needed for this. Again, this is our opportunity. Uh, Europe is major uh, and global player in development of high technology ships and green shipping technologies. At the moment, uh, Europe is still uh, the, the, the biggest player on, on the market. And uh, a lot of new innovation, new technology is coming from the Europe. And uh, we want to uh, maintain this situation and we want to even more develop new technologies on the European level. And then of course, there is a policy regulation and urgency. Uh, in 2018, there were global agreement to cut uh, GHG emis emissions from international shipping until uh, by at least 50% until 2050. 
Uh, and to meet this target, uh, we will uh, require a lot of uh, new technologies, and we see uh, this as an opportunity to companies, to government, to economies. And because of this, we again started to work uh, on the, on the uh, preparation of idea. Uh, as I said, in order to solve this problem, uh, a lot of new innovative solution and development of new technologies is needed. And when we uh, take into account that uh, uh, when you build your ship, you have like a 30 years uh, lifespan of the, of the sh ship. So we need to start uh, in the next 10 years to develop uh, and develop new ships in order to reach these targets until 2050s, which are actually pushing us to have more innovation in, uh, in, uh, in this sector. And when we can, and when we see uh, a lot of new technologies, new ideas coming, like uh, batteries, hydrogen is now uh, mentioning constantly. Then you have three D printers and three D printing, uh, which can uh, speed up some process. Artificial intelligence. So there are so many new technologies uh, ready to be implemented in uh, this sector. So how to embarrass? these change, how to develop more sustainable ecosystem, how to accelerate integration of, of innovative uh, zero emission uh, vessel technology, how to do it on a transnational level. These are the questions uh, what we asked at the beginning uh, of the project when we started to write our project. And uh, at the end result was uh, this zero emission vessel innovation project or ZEV innovation project. Uh, the project aim is to start a uh, strength uh, transnational innovation uh, through this innovation hub uh, to increase collaboration and market uptake of uh, ZEVs, uh, transnational, transnational knowledge sharing. Uh, we will have uh, experts from the Croatia, Poland, and Norway working on this project, and we uh, urgent and we ask. Uh, other companies uh, to contact us through our innovation hub, which is the one of the uh, main goal of our project is to have this innovation hub where all partners, where all uh, stakeholders have opportunity to, uh, to be member and where they can receive uh, tailored expertise, commercialization and uh, best practice. As I said, uh, Later presentation will we go in more details about what kind of expertise we offer, what is the commercialization, what are our best uh, practice, and what we are uh, looking and what we are, uh, want to have with our innovation hub. So, as I said, why Zev Innovation Project? Uh, so we have an idea of a dig a digital hub. Uh, place where all companies can uh, enter and uh, offer the products, uh, seek for the help and uh, talk with the experts. Uh, we want to include uh, different stakeholders like innovators, SMEs, research organization, clusters. We are not focusing only for, uh, for the one group of stakeholders uh, to have ability on this platform to share exchange ideas through this uh, platform. Uh, to educate uh, uh, people to transfer the knowledge the, through different uh, webinars, workshop, uh, through, to create a network for innovation, internationalization of business. Uh, that, uh, those are uh, our ideas uh, and uh, ways to help uh, stakeholders uh, regarding uh, ZEV Innovation Project. Uh, to play, uh, to actively play in the workshops and network events, and our one of the main also goals that help companies who are member of our hub to enter the international supply chain. Uh, we are we will have experts covering the business sector, uh, technology, and the innovation sector. So three very important companies are part of our network. And these companies will work uh, with the stakeholder about uh, uh, with their problems, with their uh, innovation, and help them to reach some uh, to reach uh, goals, final goals of this project to apply for patents. Uh, we want to connect uh, uh, connect as much as uh, to connect high number of companies in order to. Uh, start working on the new products, new projects, developing new ideas, 
uh, because the only only we see at the moment we see that the collaboration is the the key element to reach uh, these targets until 2050. Uh, and then we want to convert your innovative ideas and the business case into ready to market product. Uh, this is the one of the our major uh, output. So at the end, what is a project uh, potential? Uh, we can say that uh, one of the six project potential are establishment of an efficient and sustainable network, network of uh, stakeholders, researchers, uh, experts, who are working jointly on uh, zero emission uh, vessels. Uh, involvement of uh, multidisciplinary partners. As I said, uh, we are looking for different companies, different sectors to be involved in this project uh, and to help us to reach and to find out new ideas, uh, new products. Uh, collaborative development, work together on the joint application of new projects, uh, new ideas. Uh, supporting market uptake of uh, ZEVs uh, to help uh, from our expert, uh, from our experts on the project to help uh, companies to uh, to go on the new market, and uh, we want to become at the end key, play, key player on the ZEVs market in the area of European in the European area in this sector, and uh, because of this, uh, at the at the moment uh, we are starting with uh, a small area. Croatia, Poland, and Norway, but we uh, we are planning uh, to expand our influence on the whole European area because uh, uh, a lot of uh, companies, uh, a lot of uh, uh, stakeholders are existing in other countries in uh, Europe, which can uh, be a valuable member of our network uh, and uh, work together on the innovation. So thank you all for your attention. This was just an introduction, short introduction to the project about uh, what we do, what we offer, and what we want to achieve. And now uh, my colleagues, my partners uh, will uh, present more, uh, more uh, information about uh, their role and the current status in the, in the countries. So thank you very much. So I will uh, present our next presenter is Professor uh, Pedro Prebeck uh, coming from the University of Zagreb Faculty of Mechanical Engineering. And he will uh, present uh, zero emission vessel experience and future prospects in uh, Croatia. So Pedro, please start and... Uh... Thank you, Boris. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, the main objective of my presentation is to explain uh, why we have decided to apply for the grant with this specific subject and why this is interesting for many different stakeholders in Croatia. As you see, the... Sorry, uh, I will need to go back. Uh, so the, the European Green Deal uh, is actually uh, the, the result of the EU efforts for uh, environment protection and uh, the European Union has committed to become the first climate neutral bloc in the world by 2050. And uh, what is interesting that this COVID-19 situation have even more strengthened the decision to become glo global leader in green technologies. And the uh, European Green Deal investment plan uh, will lead to 1 trillion of investment by 2050, over which uh, 100 billion will be in the next uh, period. And uh, regarding uh, uh, waterborne sector, uh, EU vision is to lead and accelerate the transformation of global waterborne transport sector into zero emission mode of transport, which will eliminate it all harmful environmental emissions through innovative ship technologies and operations. Uh, one of the instruments for reaching the Green Deal objective is uh, actually Horizon Europe program. And uh, part of that program is uh, European partnership, uh, an initiative where EU together with private and public partners commit to jointly support the development and implementation of program of research and innovation in innovation activities. There are several partnerships in the uh, several 
thematic areas or in which this climate, energy and uh, mobility is the most uh, relevant for this subject. Uh, here, we see, uh, here we see this thematic area and uh, we see that uh, clean hydrogen uh, batteries, uh, clean energy transition is uh, relevant, but uh, uh, zero emission waterborne transport is completely along the lines of our project. Uh, the partnership objective is to provide and demonstrate zero emission solutions for all main ship types and service before 2030, uh, which will enable zero emission waterborne transport before 2050. The, the specific uh, scientific objective is to, to develop and demonstrate de deployable technologies. Uh, while, um, while the specific economic objective is to uh, is to have economically viable European new technologies and concepts. Um, and the specific uh, uh, societal objective is to facilitate the development of regulations and policies at national and international level to enable the implementation of technological, technological solutions for zero emission waterborne transport by 2030 at the latest. Uh, here we see the proposed actions uh, to reach given objectives. And although this design and retrofitting is the most oriented to the current design and shipbuilding practice, the, those objectives cannot be reached without proper care uh, of and giving the actions like, uh, for example, the most obvious, uh, providing the ports with necessary infrastructure for recharging and bunkering. And uh, as you probably are aware, there is no one size fit all single, uh, single zero emission solution which may transform the sector. Electric drive with battery packs is suitable only for ships that operate in short distances between ports. Hydrogen uh, seems to be viable technology for more demanding operations, but for some ship types, uh, internal combustion engines, but uh, uh, fuel with alternative green fuels looks like the only viable option from the current perspective. So different technologies need to be developed and adopted to specific operational needs and business models. Uh, the new technologies need to be need to anticipate the continuous evolution of transport needs, ports, infrastructures, technologies, and regulations. And all of these aspects require new methodologies in design, manufacturing, and retrofitting. So the common strategy for greening of in-service ships and new builds uh, can be applied in three consecutive steps. So minimize the ship energy needs, minimize the share of onboard uh, internal combustion engines and power systems and install alternative ship power systems and apply clean fuels on internal combustion engines. One of the most exciting consequences of implementing ZERV technologies is that it will lead to adaptation of fast design assessment methodologies in contrast to currently prevailing copying or scaling of ship designs with comparable uh, requirements. The transition to other energy conversion technologies and fuel leads to different needs for weight, volumes, and layout. Even retrofitting of ships with uh, new green technologies and system lead to different needs for the ship architecture. And moreover, cost-effective technology upgrades for greening will have to be foreseen since the high there is a high probability then uh, some currently unknown or unmature technologies uh, will have to be implemented before the ship end of life. And uh, here we see the first reason why we in Croatia are interested in adaptation of ZEV technologies, uh, since it can uh, improve the connectivity of Croatian islands uh, with the coast, while at the si same time giving the uh, additional push to tourism and environmental protection. And uh, the other reason is, of course, the shipbuilding and boat building industry. And although the current shipbuilding industry is uh, far from data given here, uh, the skills and some infra infrastructure is still here. And uh, here is some 
incomplete list of uh, their related activities, subjects. Um, first, the two different full electric small catamarans are already designed and built and delivered for national parks in uh, Croatia. Uh, several design offices are involved in design projects for hybrid and full electric ships uh, in uh, 2019, 2020. So the last two years, uh, most of them are ferries, but uh, there are also some uh, pretty uh, innovative solutions for uh, merchant transport, like uh, the one you can see here for uh, that um, uh, fostered uh, the wind, uh, wind energy to help to reduce uh, uh, fuel, uh, fuel consumption. Some companies already are at the market with their specific uh, technologies, like uh, Tema from Pula, Solvis for Varazdin, uh, Tema produce uh, electric propulsion, uh, Solvis solar panels. There is also, of course, Rimac Automobili that can help in uh, developing battery packs. Uh, there is Conchar Institute, and probably some others that, uh, that I haven't mentioned here. Um, but there is also support coming from a research institution and universities like uh, Brodersky uh, Institute, uh, University of Zagreb, uh, coming from the uh, Faculty of Mechanical Engineering and Naval Architecture, Faculty of Electrical Engineering. There is also, of course, uh, Faculty of Electrical Engineering and uh, uh, Mechanical Engineering from Split. Uh, uh, Rijeka Technical uh, University. So there is, a, there is a support, definitely. And here you can see the, uh, the two examples. Uh, the first is ICAT. Uh, this is actually the, the first uh, small catamaran, full electric catamaran designed uh, and built in uh, Croatia. And uh, you can see that, uh, that uh, also the, the engines are uh, developed here in Croatia and uh, solar, solar panels. Uh, it's a ship 15 meters long and as you will see with the other examples it's uh, more or less uh, similar although this one is fully made of uh, fiber reinforced plastic hub. The other one is uh, uh, coming from Dalmont, uh, ex uh, Kraljevica shipyard. Uh, you see that length is pretty much the, the same or, or a bit, a bit less. Uh, also the passenger capacity and as you see this, this one is made from aluminium alloy. It also exploits some of the uh, creation potential for uh, development of uh, ZEV technologies like ZEV like uh, solar panels coming from Solvis and uh, it's designed by the company company from Croatia. And at the end, uh, just a quick overview of some opportunities for financing uh, zero emission vessels R&D in Croatia. So I have already mentioned the Horizon Europe, Europe and ZEVT partnership. It will be the uh, definitely the most, uh, uh, the most, let's say, wanted uh, way of uh, financing and we uh, we actually hope that during this project we will enable uh, generation of some uh, partnership of, uh, uh, of some consor consortium. Uh, at national level, of course, we have European uh, structural funds and the great thing is that in uh, strategy for smart specialization, uh, in transport and mobility section, there are environmental friendly transport solution and uh, the pillar two of this uh, part is actually waterborne sector. So uh, there will be no problem in uh, applying for financing here. Um, uh, I, I mentioned here IRI, IRI 1 and IRI 2 calls uh, just because uh, the IRI 3 have been announced uh, that should be financed by the uh, allocation from the next uh, 20, 20, 21 to 27 uh, financing period. Uh, there is also co-financing scheme for the purchase of electric and uh, hydrogen propulsion vessels that is uh, actually currently open and uh, it's, it co finds up to 40% uh, and up to 10, uh, 10 million kuna, uh, kunas uh, electric vessels. And of course, uh, lately, 
I think the last last week or two weeks ago, it was just closed the uh, Innovation Norway for business development and innovation uh, Croatia call. So thank you very much for your attention. That's all for me for now. Boris. Thank you, thank you very much, Pero. Uh, at the moment, we don't have any question, but uh, I would like to ask you a very, very quick question. Uh, where do you see potential in Croatia for the zero emission vessel? What is the potential, you know? Uh, we well, are specific countries with a lot of uh, small islands. Some are very close, some very wide, you know, long distance. So what you will say as the starting point for the transforming this sector in Croatia? Well, I wouldn't know about starting point, but uh, in addition to the things that are mentioned, uh, uh, there is also uh, initiative for European clean islands uh, where uh, there will be also strong financial boost to development of uh, renewable energy, energy sources in, uh, in islands. And uh, as you know, uh, the, uh, let's say, intermittent nature of those uh, energy sources will generate uh, a lot of uh, uh, energy where uh, at some point will not be able to uh, use. So it will, it will be necessary to store, store that energy. And uh, those stored energy can be used for uh, also for transport, uh, uh, either storing it uh, for for example, in, in hydrogen or in uh, battery packs. So, but the, the, that's one of the possibilities. And of course, uh, coming from naval architecture field, I think that uh, uh, one of the, the most uh, promising uh, things uh, currently is that we have uh, design offices that are capable of dealing with uh, any sort of uh, new innovative uh, design. And uh, I think that uh, Croatia could be a really, uh, let's say, important partner in this uh, coming period. Okay, Pero, thank you. Yeah, it's it's a very interesting and it can be like a testing place for the for the new technology. I hope that we'll have something in the future. So thank you. Uh, our next uh, presenter is uh, our colleague from uh, Poland, uh, Marek. Uh, so he is coming from the Baltic Sea and Space Cluster. Uh, and he will present uh, zero emission ships, the Baltic and North Sea market, Polish shipyards experience and production potential. So, mm. Marek, uh, please uh, mm -hmm. just start sharing. Uh, okay, but Boris, I have information that I cannot share my screen because I have not uh, permission. Oh, I don't know. Uh -huh. You cannot start a screen share where the other participant uh, is sharing, but I, I see that uh, you must uh, change uh, to main page. Oh, oh okay. okay. Pera is sharing, so now you are... Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Now. So another very interesting market is uh, Polish market. So Marek uh, will give us an uh, overview of the Polish market. And uh, okay. I think that is uh, very good that we have... Uh, a cluster mm. from the Poland as a member of uh, our uh, project mm. and I hope that uh, Marek and the other members of the cluster will have a very good uh, how to say experience uh, receive the knowledge receive mm -hmm. the help from the program and from the project in the field of zero emission uh, Marek is it uh, okay starting yes wait a moment Okay, okay, no problem. Now I think that it will be work. Okay, is it working? Yeah, it's working. Okay. Uh, sorry. But it is end of presentation. I, I, I think that uh, all people uh, waiting for the end, but uh, <laughs> then we can start. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, my uh, 
uh, information presentation uh, is uh, about the Baltic and North Sea market and Polish shipyards experience in and production in pro potential. Uh, uh, and uh, we start uh, uh, from short information about Baltic Sea and Space Cluster. Uh, Baltic Sea and Space Cluster interested in uh, all innovation in maritime industry, including artificial intelligence, uh, ports, trans maritime transport, and uh, uh, including logistics law, maritime law, and of course, we uh, working in uh, uh, technology transfer between uh, space uh, uh, and uh, maritime industry. Uh, we are not big cluster because we choose our members and our members, uh, there are members with a strong position in the Polish and international market and with strong position in uh, innovations, including, including uh, Pomeranian Special Economic Zone, uh, Port uh, Gdynia and Gdańsk, Shipyards Christ and Nauta, uh, uh, Port Hamburg Marketing, Automatic Systems Engineering, and other companies. And we choose our partners, uh, including uh, its uh, activity in uh, innovation transfer. And uh, uh, our activity in uh, ZEF uh, Innovation, Zero Emission Vessel Innovation Project. Uh, first, uh, the Baltic and North Sea markets. Uh, you see now a uh, map of uh, uh, Roro Cargo uh, turnover and activity of uh, 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 shipping lines in the Baltic Sea region and uh, North Sea. And uh, here on the left, you can find uh, our market and our uh, partners in uh, uh, Zero Innovation Vessel Hub. And next uh, slide inform about activity of the uh, ROPAX map. And here you find a new part of our partners and uh, uh, it is demand for uh, our activity and for uh, zero uh, emission uh, vessels. Here you see information about services and uh, operators which uh, service uh, on the Baltic and uh, uh, Atlantic or North Sea market. And uh, uh, general information about uh, what happened in ports uh, as part of the uh, logistics maritime chain uh, in the Baltic Sea region. And uh, you see uh, it is information about uh, Baltic ports cargo turnover. You see that uh, Ustwuga is on the first place, but uh, uh, Gdańsk and uh, uh, Gdynia, because uh, these two ports work in uh, uh, Gdańsk by in, in one uh, region. Uh, when we add this uh, activities in cargo turnover, you see that uh, uh, Gdańsk and, and Gdynia uh, are on uh, second place in the Baltic Sea region. Uh, and uh, Next, information about uh, the Polish market. About Polish market, you see, uh, I inform only uh, our uh, ports and uh, the main Polish ports. It is uh, Gdańsk, Gdynia, uh, Szczecin, and Świnoujście. But, uh, but if you see about the uh, length of seaport ways, you see that the small ports, it's, it is not uh, small, uh, 
as for example Elblong uh, in uh, uh, in this in this place uh, it uh, has uh, a quasi long uh, more than uh, five uh, kilometers. Uh, Darłowo it is more than uh, 5.7 kilometers. Then you see that uh, definition smart and big port uh, uh, is uh, very uh, uh, difficult uh, to uh, uh, to explain. Uh, and uh, information about what happened with our uh, ports uh, according uh, zero emission vessels. Uh, our port, uh, um, our ports are visited uh, 11,000 ships every year with mainly with scrubbers. Only, only about 1,000 1, visits. Uh, there are ships with LNG uh, propulsion. About 10 ships every year visited Polish ports with electric propulsion and zero ships with hydrogen and methanol uh, uh, propulsion. And short information about uh, uh, um, turnover in Polish ports from 2012-2019. Uh, as you see, Gdańsk is uh, in the first place uh, and uh, in the second place Szczecin Świnoujście and Gdynia in the third place. Uh, global turnover in, in the Polish ports is more than 100 uh, tons. And uh, uh, Polish shipyards uh, production. Uh, short information uh, with uh, uh, photos and uh, slides more. Uh, first slide, it is general information about my uh, uh, zero emission uh, vessels, uh, Polish shipyards production. Uh, in Poland, we have produced uh, um, hybrid vessel for uh, uh, Finnish market, uh, uh, um, hybrid diesel vessel for uh, uh, transport for London, Ampere for uh, Norway, uh, uh, owner, uh, Electra color hybrid and Salish Orca. It, it is uh, it is a ship with uh, uh, dual fuel with LNG, and uh, uh, you see that Ampere received Ship of the Year award in 2014 and color hybrid received Ship of the Year in 2019. And short, in, uh, short views of this production. Uh, Double-ended ferry uh, with, uh, it is electric ferry for hill ferries uh, and uh, next ferries uh, are in uh, uh, construction and uh, production. Uh, next uh, ferry with uh, um, hybrid uh, propulsion, uh, it is uh, Ropax for uh, uh, Iceland uh, owner. Uh, next, four ships from uh, Christ shipyard, uh, which is which was uh, built with, in cooperation with uh, Ulstein. And next uh, production, it is BC ferries, uh, Salish Orca uh, type, uh, six this type ferries. Uh, uh, 
who will be uh, working in uh, uh, British California in uh, Canada. And next, this very uh, hybrid diesel electric propulsion, it is a ferry for transport for London. And uh, small uh, vessels, small vessels, it, it, it is electric hydrodrone uh, with a, a, a goal to uh, doing research uh, in uh, in ports and and uh, bay area. <clears throat> And uh, next, uh, Polish shipyard potential, in short words. Uh, we are uh, in uh, uh, four stages in uh, 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 Polish industry because we work in uh, different uh, areas. Uh, ships with scrubbers, it is... Uh, 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 mm, good experience in Polish uh, shipyards and uh, we uh, uh, um, transfer uh, propulsion and support uh, propulsion to uh, uh, work with uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, Baltic and North Sea uh, uh, zone. And next I said Salish Orca, it's dual fuel ships. Uh, next uh, um, progress in our development and our activity uh, in zero emission vessels is uh, uh, ferry for island uh, uh, owner and uh, ferry for inlines. It is a completely electric uh, propulsion ferry. Uh, Polish shipyards potential. In short words, uh, ship production potential is, uh, in my opinion, it is 30 new uh, zero emission vessels per year. Now, uh, all ship production uh, is uh, 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 mm, is work. Uh, on uh, uh, international market, mainly, mainly uh, on uh, um, Scandinavian market. Ship conversion, we can create, we can do ship conversion uh, in Polish shipyards. Uh, in my opinion, 90 uh, vessels per year, we can converse from uh, traditional propul propulsion Na, on uh, uh, electric or dual fuel uh, propulsion. Maybe more, maybe more. And yachts and boats. Uh, Poland is uh, uh, one of main uh, producers in the world, yachts and boats. Uh, our production, it is about 22,000 yacht and boats uh, uh, on the international market mainly and uh, about uh, um, five to ten percent of these yachts uh, there are uh, big yachts and uh, it is our uh, market and uh, our uh, um, potential to offer new zero emission uh, boats in the market. Uh, here you see in this uh, photo, uh, uh, it is a container with batteries on Tycho Brahe uh, ferry, uh, which uh, was uh, um, converted to uh, electric propulsion from diesel propulsion. And Polish shipyards potential. Uh, the, uh, these uh, uh, ships 
uh, which I uh, uh, presented in this presentation are produced in two areas. One area, it is Remontovashi building, and the second big area, it is Baltic port of new technologies in Gdynia. And you see here is Christ shipyard, Nauta shipyard, and Damen, Damen, Damen Polska shipyard. And Polish uh, uh, companies and members of the Baltic Sea and Space Cluster participated in development of ZEF innovation uh, ships in different uh, stages of production. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marek. Thank you for the for, for the presentation. Uh, you gave us actually very good overview of the situation in the Poland. Uh, I, I saw that uh, in your cluster you have uh, a lot of uh, very interesting companies working in this sector, and I hope that in the in the future uh, we will have opportunity to have collaboration or cooperation between Croatian, Polish, and Norway company on development of. Uh, new project new products new ideas what is the uh, main idea of our pro uh, project thank you marek thank so you. our next presenter is uh, per ingeber coming from okp from norway uh, so per will uh, present uh, zero emission vessels uh, overview of the state of the art in norway uh, Per is uh, our uh, technical expert from the from in this field. I think that uh, Per have a lot of experience and he can share uh, a lot of uh, good information. Uh, and uh, Per, floor is yours. So please start with your presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me well? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, let me try to get the full picture. Full screen. Can you see the full screen, uh, Boris? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Full screen is here. Excellent. Okay, so um, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Per Ingeberg. I'm a project manager from uh, OKP for uh, Seb Innovation Project. Um, I'm also EU advisor for the clusters under our administration in Norway. And uh, related to that, I really look forward to, uh, to the pilot projects in in Seven Innovation and uh, the potential prospects for funding through the uh, New Horizon Europe program, which uh, Pero also pointed out. So that will be exciting. Um, as you can see here, Okope is located in the heart of the largest uh, maritime cluster in Norway. It's on uh, the northwest coast um, in the famous uh, Jugend city of Olsen. So if you have a chance to go there, it's a fantastic, uh, beautiful city and, um, and you are very welcome, of course. Um, we are um, well integrated in uh, the campus Olsen together with uh, Norwegian University of Science and Technology, NTNU. Uh, you find Research Institute SINTEF um, in the cluster, uh, in the campus, sorry. Uh, Kongsberg Group is established uh, with the Kongsberg Maritime. And you find also uh, many other industry uh, companies, laboratories for research and innovation developments in the same area. We also uh, close now to the newly established Ocean Space Lab Laboratory. Uh, which is uh, dedicated to uh, full-scale real-life testing of autonomous vessels. It's just outside the Olderson area in the fjord called, uh, called Storfjord. Um, Okope is a regional center for innovation and uh, business development then representing large uh, both marine and uh, maritime hub. Uh, we manage two industry clusters, the Blue Maritime and the Blue Legacy, the latter being uh, for marine products and fisheries. 
um, as part of the OCOP Blue Innovation Area now, which we have built up uh, over years. Uh, we offer training and development programs for both startups and scale-ups, um, uh, which will you know, be trans transferable, a lot of the experience we have from there to, to the build-up of the hub uh, in this project. We also take on uh, management roles for uh, collaboration projects, uh, both uh, nationally with, uh, with uh, our partners and internationally, uh, where we, as an example, run digital transformation projects uh, through our digital uh, catapult, the National Catapult Center. A uh, little bit to the clusters. Um, and we see a great advantage in the maritime and the marine link, uh, where, amongst many things, uh, we facilitate the development and the implementation of uh, digital solutions, uh, which is, of course, also very relevant when we talk about zero emission vessels. Uh, between um, uh, the marine and maritime sector, by using the digital catapult, uh, as I just explained, and uh, our simulation expertise uh, from the maritime cluster. Uh, by the way, in the marine cluster, we have uh, close to 60 uh, members. Um, in, in the digi digital catapult, we can uh, take concepts and ideas, uh, which can be then validated through virtual prototyping, developed as um, digital twins in different formats, it can be simulated and tested then for various applications. So it's a great opportunity to do testing virtually before you have to invest in, in um, costly equipment. Now to the maritime cluster, <clears throat> which has a long tradition, many years in pioneering all the blue opportunities that uh, the cluster uh, are approaching. Uh, so the experience go all the way back to old building old Viking ships, uh, obviously through the offshore oil and gas era, uh, and then to the latest development uh, as a, an example here uh, from the expedition cruises. Um, and this maritime cluster are the Hmong uh, the strongest in the world on completeness. Showing a little bit here on the next uh, slide. Uh, the complete cluster consists of 18 ship owners, 13 yards, 13 designers, and as much as 170 equipment makers. And they all tell a very long story of a unique close cooperation that has uh, really been the foundation for building this uh, strong maritime cluster. And now to our role in the seven innovation project. So here we, um, our role is to be advisor and uh, expert partner. Uh, we are going to exchange uh, the best uh, from the state of the art technologies and development in Norway. Um, and together with um, OCOPE's best practice platform experience over many years for startups and scale-ups, we hope that uh, we are able to transfer uh, the best experience into this hub. And uh, we are also responsible for Work Package 3, which is uh, then focused on research and technology foresight. And here we have special focus on how Norwegian expertise uh, within zero emission vessel development can help pilot the pilot countries to enhance their uh, capabilities. Now to the topic, uh, the main topic of the presentation uh, of mine today is to give you a very short overview of the state of the art developments uh, of zero emission vessel targets in Norway as per today. And, um, here, it's typically hydrogen-driven ship projects and, and the hybrid ships. So uh, here you see an overview uh, from um, 
uh, a presentation from the ferry company Norled that um, presented the Hydra uh, project, as you find a, a small picture on there. Um, this is a semi hydrogen powered ferry going to operate in the fjords of Stavanger in the south uh, uh, west coast of Norway. Um, the, the ferry will be operational from summer 2021. And uh, all the other vessels you see is either hydrogen fuel cell powered or a combination of fuel cells and batteries. Uh, if we look back uh, from the start uh, of this picture, um, you see the energy observer and race for water. They are two boats designed to create the best out of renewable energy on ships. Um, these are small sailboats, so, so basically they have a relatively little transfer value for the shipping industry. Although the, uh, the market effect and, and the uh, focus and the understanding on, on, um, on uh, renewable energy in the shipping industry uh, has its values in itself, of course. Um, then we have um, Electra started in 2019. Uh, this is a hydrogen electric tug for European waterways. It pushes barges up and down the rivers. Um, uh, to my understanding, it looks like the vessel is not yet in operation, but uh, the keel was laid, uh, I think, in early March this year. Uh, finally, on this uh, overview, mentioning uh, the project Maranda. Uh, it is a FCH uh, joint, uh, on joint undertaking uh, EU funded project uh, from back from 2017. Um, now they are using the research ship Aranda that has a fuel cell installation on board, approximately 165 kilowatt installed, and it's going to do a six month test, as we're told. All the other projects uh, on this overview uh, are being planned as we speak. Now to a couple of hybrid solutions. Uh, one is Colorline's uh, plug-in hybrid, hybrid, which uh, Marek also mentioned. Uh, this is obviously a, a prestige project in, in Norway um, where the vessel sails on battery in and out from the Sandefjord uh, Harbor in, uh, on the Norwegian side. Uh, we know that there's a work on the way to prepare similar capacity in Strømstad in uh, Sweden. On the, as the other port. Um, we know that the project shows that local pollution can be significantly reduced in port. Uh, the other one, uh, the coastline operator uh, Hurtigruten has uh, Fritjof Nansen and Roald Amundsen as their hybrid uh, expedition cruise vessels. And um, uh, we know that um, Hurtigruten has also uh, options for, for two more vessels. So uh, we hope the market will pick up on that side, of course, we all do. Uh, then to electric ferries. Uh, there are many ferry routes in Norway to be electric in the future. Um, 26 will be electric this year, mostly along the uh, west coast of Norway. Uh, and more than 60 new builds are ordered as electric ferries. Uh, the ferry company Fjord En, uh, then represented here by the Kommandören, um, is already in the process of phasing in 30 electric vessels into the fleet uh, actually by this year. And these are 25 new builds and five retrofits. Um, there are still requirements for diesel generator as a backup, uh, which also allows for maintenance and repair. Uh, if charging fails. Um, there are quite uh, a few challenges uh, or the main challenges are related to onshore infrastructure. It's often costly and a demanding local process in developing uh, the different uh, onshore solutions. Then to hybrid uh, offshore vessel, uh, 
which has uh, taken uh, uh, a direction due to the fact that Equinor today demands the offshore fleet to offer hybrid capacity. Uh, we see relatively large fuel savings due to variable operating profile. And we see results showing between 5 to 15% uh, over lower energy consumption. Um, there's a lot to gain in, um, for instance, uh, dynamic positioning, where they use battery for peak saving for leveling out the load. Uh, I think this will be the standard solution going forward. Finally, my presentation, a quick glance at uh, fishing vessels and fish carriers, where we see an increasingly degree using batteries in hybrid solutions, which is very good. And also workboats for aquaculture is coming um, fastly, and they're now more and more built either as completely electric or hybrid uh, diesel battery. We see that in, in many areas, they have a short distance from shore to the, to the site, to the fish farms. So um, they could be um, uh, really beneficial to, uh, to um, also for existing fleet to uh, retrofit uh, with batteries. We see that coming more and more. Yeah, so this was a very quick and brief run through the various development in Norway. Thank you. Thank you, Per, for this very interesting presentation, actually uh, showing why we took uh, OCOP uh, and why program is financing uh, a cooperation like this, that the Norwegian company need to transfer knowledge to other European companies because they are leader in this uh, field. And one quick question. Uh, what could be the main reason for Norwegian companies to be interested in cooperation with the companies from Poland and Croatia? Uh, just quick, by your words, <laughs> you know, you cannot save the world and you cannot start cooperation, but let's say it for the discussion. Yes, I think, uh, first of all, uh, what comes to my mind is that um, there are already quite a lot of uh, Norwegian companies, uh, small and large, uh, already established, well established in, in both Croatia and Poland. And of course, uh, for them to get access to this particular hub in seven innovation project could be of interest. They will, um, they will have access to a wider network they will have the opportunity to participate in the pilot projects uh, where we have targets to, to um, also get uh, interesting funding through the EU program. So I think that uh, in general, um, for them, it will be you know, adding on uh, their network uh, and, and uh, open up opportunities and um, which also uh, counts for uh, other companies which is not established, we, we should be able to motivate them and encourage them to, to see the same opportunities. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, this is uh, challenging, uh, very interesting, and we actually want to connect companies in our project between Croatia, Norway, Poland. And we are actually seeking for innovative products for joint uh, how to say, innovative products developed by uh, companies from these three countries. We are not uh, looking for one uh, company working only in Croatia, Poland, but uh, joint working on development of the products. And this will be very good for the project and that we want to achieve in our project. So thank you, Per. Uh, thank you. Our next presenter is uh, Barbara Salopek. Uh, Barbara is coming from the Vinco Innovation Company from Norway, uh, and she will present. Uh, uh, she topic of her presentation is innovation. Why it matters today more than ever, and what do permanent innovators have in common? So, Barbara, floor is your. Please uh, present, and after your presentation, we'll have one or two questions. Thank you. Thank you, Boris, very much. It's a pleasure to uh, have opportunity to talk today and present uh, Vinco Innovation. Um, 
So just to um, start the presentation. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, thank you for this nice uh, introduction, Boris, and thank you to the previous colleagues. It's uh, very interesting to hear uh, one more time about everyone and about the project. So um, Winco Innovation is a partner in, in the project, and we will describe here a little bit about um, the project, our role, and also why we think this is a really important initiative. So, um, yeah. Winco Innovation, our specialty is innovation. Uh, innovation is strictly linked to, with growth. If you look at the statistics, uh, it's because new ideas create new businesses. It's not invention, but it's innovation. Uh, invention that makes, uh, brings value, that's innovation. So it's not about having a patent, it's also using the patent in business, which matters. So that is innovation. And this is what uh, we are focusing on. Uh, our goal is to help other companies to manage innovation successfully. And it's not only about structuring innovation process, uh, because also you need to have a creative uh, innovation environments, innovation culture within the company in order for the processes to work. So we help companies to create both innovation culture, but also then uh, innovation processes or simply guide uh, an idea or two or technologies to the market. Uh, as we have also one of the things, uh, uh, this is one of the uh, goals also of this project. Uh, so, um, or this is other, in other words, called commercialization. So this, we focus on innovation in a holistic view uh, from bottom up or top down to say it in a simple words. Uh, we have been established in the end of 2016. So we are still very young, but we have a strong competence in our team. We have also uh, good uh, examples of our customers and clients. One of the biggest uh, recently was winning a, a public tender with the Norwegian Roads Administration, uh, which we are very proud and which we delivered with a really good success and uh, the Norwegian Roads were very satisfied. Uh, we have also um, a knowledge and know-how about different uh, funding schemes in Norway. Uh, and also internationally, this AI and the Norway grants. Um, so um, we are also on the West Coast as Okope, but a little bit more South, uh, we are in Bergen. Uh, as you can see here from the char a chart, uh, we are expertise partner together with Okope in this project. Uh, and this is our team for the project. Uh, I'm the CEO of the company, but I also uh, come into the project with my innovation expertise. Trond, uh, he is a project manager and leads the project from our side. Uh, he's also very experienced, uh, also in the innovation and startup uh, uh, environment. So uh, we are very happy to have him on the team. And also we have Malene, who is also uh, expert on innovation and also will help with uh, innovation know-how and also very, uh, we are very happy to have her as well. And so uh, this is very shortly about the team. Uh, I'm, um, I'm originally from Croatia and I came to Norway in 2006 uh, and I have um, this uh, luxury of knowing the both cultures very well, uh, both Croatia and Norway. Uh, living in Norway for 14 years, speaking the language fluently and being uh, integrated. Uh, so it's, um, I really enjoy being the bridge between the two countries and of course more countries because I also have been uh, living in Germany and the US. Uh, so um, as an expertise partner, we not only bring innovation know-how, but also we would like to contribute when it comes to networking between Norway, Croatia and other countries, uh, which will produce the active project collaboration, no, uh, knowledge sharing and connecting prospect collaborators. When it comes to the innovation know-how, we come with a different aspects of this through helping creating innovation strategy, business development, market analysis, leadership of commercial research projects, helping how to make the innovation funnel, which means how to um, collect ideas, how to evaluate, how to get them to the market, whether it is going to be a startup or it's going to be a licensed uh, or it's going to be a patent and then it's licensed out to uh, someone else. So we have these competences and experience, and we really, with the heart, want to bring this to the project and transfer it to the to the other, uh, not only partners in the project, but also stakeholders and the members of the project in the long run. So as I said, um, 
One thing is to uh, bring the know-how, innovation know-how, but also we have four uh, professional uh, uh, working packages and we are in charge of the working package, uh, which focuses on hub creation. Uh, this working package starts in January and it will focus among others on these uh, activities named here. First, we will try to research uh, on existing solutions and processes, see what other, um, in other hubs have done, how did they did it, what are they key success factors and what from this can be applied to this case. Uh, we will also uh, talk with the stakeholders and research what they want from this hub in order to the, then work with definition or the processes and methods for idea generation and evaluation. And this is, um, you have to have in mind that this is on transnational level, how we will collect ideas uh, on transnational level and how we will guide them through the innovation panel in order to launch them on the market at the end. Of course, those things will be um, a basis to establish an online platform that will be facilitating these processes. Uh, and then uh, we will, in addition, work to uh, implementation of crucial networking activities in order to develop business cooperation and create synergies. And I already know there are a couple of initiatives who are interested in this transnational uh, project and a collaboration. So um, to go a little bit on the topic of this, today's presentation, uh, like if we take away COVID and climate uh, as an issues, then we already had very challenging uh, environments, empowered customers that can get all information through the internet. We have exp exponential technological development and oil prices. But in addition to that, today, um, climate and sustainability are extremely important. And in addition to that, COVID-19 situation. So it's extremely challenging uh, environments that companies have to navigate. Uh, today's situation, 2020, will change the many business models will change some industries. So innovation is extremely important um, to help companies uh, sustain in the long run. And when we talk about crisis or these difficult periods we are, for example, now in COVID-19, uh, it's also very helpful to learn from the past experience. So we have done a research and uh, we looked into the, what was the outcome of finance, finance crisis in 2008 and what impacts had it on innovation. Because if you look at innovation and Schumpeter, who was the father of innovation, he said that creative destruction is great for innovation. But the question, of course, is, is this crisis a creative a destruction at all or not? Uh, and if you look at the, the finance crisis 2008, OECD has done a, a research and they uh, said that um, it was evident that we had a fall in patent activities fall in the number of PCT applications and number of startups. And this is not unusual because if it's crisis, the, the economy shrinks, people are more risk averse, uh, they are afraid to uh, invest. So of course this happens. And in addition to that, uh, we, have we had increased bank uh, bankruptcy numbers in the whole of Europe. So the study rejects the implication that crisis increases innovation. However, uh, 2008 crisis, there were cases both on the national level and the company's level that they continued to innovate. Some countries like South Korea and China, they continued to innovate, or actually increased innovation. And also was this the case for some companies. So we dig a little bit uh, more into this to find out what was in common for those, because those that continued to innovate despite the crisis, uh, they are called permanent or persistent innovators. When we look on the national level, it means that companies that uh, were permanent, uh, the nations that were permanent innovators, they had a good national institution, institutional structures for innovation. They had robust financial systems and highly skilled human capital. And this grant is one of the things that builds the good national institutional structures for innovation. Actually, it's not national, it's transnational. So this is something that creates the basics so we can innovate more. And in this way, we can offset the crisis effects. And of course, by transferring the knowledge and know-how, we build on the highly skilled human capital on transnational level. 
So if you look at the goals of the AI Norway grants, they want to solve common European challenges. They focus on more equal Europe and they also focus on strengthening relations. So, uh, and by doing this, we increase, as I said, a know-how on the European level. We strengthen the innovation institutional basis to be more innovative. And this is how it makes us more robust against the crisis. In another thing, if we look on the companies level, what the research showed was that um, companies that continue to innovate, they focus on delivering products that were new to the market. And you probably wonder, what does this mean new to the market? Very simple example. If you take the iPhone, iPhone, when it first came or iPad, they were new to the market. But when you look at the Samsung Galaxy, it wasn't new to the market, it was new to the company. So focusing on the products that are trans transformational, that change the industry, that are totally new to the market, they actually uh, contribute that in the long run, the company will sustain and uh, be more robust. Of course, strong human capital, again, is an extremely important part of the success. Without highly skilled human capital, no growth, no innovation will be possible. And this together is uh, connected with growing creative accumulation. What does this mean? This means embracing technological changes, embracing all the technological developments are coming, using artificial intelligence, using, uh, using um, machine learning, blockchain, all these technologies in order to create create new uh, products in the market. And if we connect this to overall goals of the project, we're focusing on creating networks for the development of electric ships to promote maritime innovation. We want to have technologies, ideas that will be commercialized, that will bring, that will also transfer ideas, transfer knowledge on transnational level in order to lift not only those countries involved, but also to to, uh, to uh, grow know-how uh, on the European level. So um, as a, from innovation part of view, uh, of view so we, we are coming with innovation know-how and I showed here how important it is to focus on innovation, how important it is to build all the elements that help us innovate better. And this is also in line with the overall goals of the project. So uh, we are looking forward to be part of this to uh, contribute to uh, making this project successful. And we hope that we will get many partners interested. Uh, this project is goes on three more years. Uh, it will be uh, uh, demanding for everyone, but it's also on cultural levels, but uh, we really look forward and we really uh, are going with the hearts and want this to succeed and to create some good examples by the end of those three years for the long run success. So this was all from my side. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. I already got some uh, inquiries uh, and uh, we will follow up those. Uh, contact me or Boris who is leading the project and uh, hopefully uh, you will be much, will be active contributor to the project. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Barbara, for this uh, very good presentation. Uh, I have one very small, quick question, uh, and I hope that you can give us an answer on it. Uh, do you know what is the level of innovation in this sector, in waterborne sector? Did you work on any innovation in this sector? Do you have any experience uh, when you prepared uh, your presentation? Did you catch or get any number from this sector? You know, because uh, I'm, I'm not the expert in this sector and I don't have the numbers, so maybe you have some numbers about innovation in the uh, uh, maritime sector, waterborne sector. So. Well, um, this is a very general question that you ask about innovation. Norway is, uh, since 2014, Norway innovation uh, success has been growing. They are investing lots of money and if you look at the percentage, not only when you look at the percentage of GDP, uh, but you, you look at the absolute numbers, uh, it's a great amount that Norway is finally shifting from oil and gas focus to the sustainable and green focus. And they have many good projects uh, also in Bergen region and Olesund uh, that are, uh, that are uh, supporting this uh, politics on the, on the national level. So um, 
they are like we have in our uh, for our, our only our region we have 96 companies here uh, that are connected to this to this uh, topic so um, I don't know like what other numbers were you looking for so yeah, yeah, this is actually okay because, uh, you know, uh, other countries, uh, you know, you are leading countries, so we will need somehow to transfer this uh, knowledge experience and how they start uh, to other companies in Croatia, Poland, but uh, also worldwide if we, if we uh, invite them and if they accept our invitation to join us up. So, Barbara, thank you. Uh, if there are more questions, uh, as Barbara said, you can send to us and we will answer you. So our next presenter uh, is uh, Boyan Bajic. So he's coming from Croatian company Innovacji Razvoj or uh, on English innovation and development. Uh, so Boyan will present uh, Zev Innovation Business and Joint R&D Opportunities. So Boyan, uh, floor is your. So please Thank start. Thank you Boris, uh, greetings to everyone. <clears throat> Uh, I'm glad that you joined us today for this webinar. I will shortly present uh, uh, what is uh, the business enjoyed R&D opportunity for and beneficiaries of this project uh, uh, planned to be implemented during the pre uh, project implementation. So uh, we already mentioned the uh, uh, digital innovation hub. So. Uh, what does it actually mean? Uh, it means that it ha will have, uh, let's say, four main topics. Uh, that is the knowledge sharing, that is education, that is networking and internationalization and innovation. So uh, what are we building up in this uh, knowledge sharing part uh, is mainly uh, connected to our uh, first activities in the project. And that is to, uh, to implement technology foresight and to detect the focal R&D points uh, uh, in, uh, 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 in zero emission vessels uh, the technologies, uh, which will be uh, available uh, through this uh, platform. Also, uh, we will uh, do the market analysis and share it on the platform. We will do the detailed map of R&D production and the ZEV operators. In the project area, uh, by meaning project area, not only Poland, uh, uh, Croatia, and Norway is, is in our interest, but all region of uh, Euro European economic area, um, from where we plan to catch the key players and uh, and map them also in this um, in uh, in this uh, in, during the development of the platform. Also, we will share the best practices in design, financing, production, and practical use of uh, zero emission vessels. Um, uh, another thing also, we will be updating uh, regularly uh, the funding opportunities uh, and other relevant information that can be useful for users of this platform. Uh, in the education part, uh, also uh, uh, webinars like this, uh, digital library that we are preparing uh, and um, um, all archive of educational mat materials produced during this project will be available to, to users of the platform. Uh, also, users uh, will be able to uh, use uh, the platform for networking and internationalization by presenting uh, their, uh, pro their products, uh, their interests and proposals. Uh, also, uh, partner search will be available and, uh, and we will push the transnational business cooperation primarily between Norway, Poland and Croatia. In this part, there is not only a digital part uh, in which uh, users can, can connect, but there will be also our expertise and our expert from the behind who will help uh, the beneficiaries and users of this platform in finding partners, in uh, uh, connecting uh, for a possible co cooperation agreements and stuff like that. So it is also, this part is also connected with our pilot activities in this project, uh, which I will mention uh, uh, later. Um, uh, and also innovation part, in this part, we, will, we would like to use this platform as much as, as it's possible uh, to build up the joint innovative business ideas. 
uh, and also uh, this platform will be used for uh, application for programs, uh, pilot programs in this project. So, uh, another part uh, of the project, what we offer for, for beneficiaries is uh, study visits, uh, interested developers uh, in order to exchange ideas and develop new project, products will be able to join us uh, in uh, study visits, visits which are planned in Norway, Poland and Croatia. And uh, there is also uh, the, the main part of this, uh, of this project and what do we offer for uh, companies, innovators, etc. are those pilot programs which will be implemented uh, after the study visits and the uh, startup of the hub. And these pilot programs are uh, mainly um, um they're consistent of uh three pillars three topics that is idea development product development and market development in each of these uh, fields we, uh, we will provide uh several activities for for uh, interested uh, teams uh, for development of products ideas and market so for the idea development uh, we will select uh, up to 10 projects uh, for which uh, we will provide matchmaking services we will organize joint workshops uh, we will um, do the business development services such as ip strategy planning business planning and uh, we will provide also technical expertise in this early phase of development of innovative ideas uh, uh, we will surely have focus on transnational initiatives so cooperation uh, will be uh, one of uh, selecting criteria uh, and also uh, uh, for for those ideas uh, which we uh, uh, which we select we, we will push to develop uh, some business case which can be further presented for for uh, other partners investors and uh, also a plan also a plan for uh, uh, further development of, uh, of idea and the project or service. So uh, from those 10 projects which will be uh, developed, uh, we plan to, uh, to choose four, uh, I can say the best teams, best ideas. Uh, and uh, for those teams, uh, we plan to uh, implement pilot action, uh, which is uh, product development. And we will provide product development services for uh, those selected, selected ideas, uh, primarily with uh, external technology mentors, uh, mainly coming from Norway, and uh, participation uh, in joint workshops, which will be organized in Norway. So four teams out which will be involved will have this opportunity to develop their ideas in more, more details until uh, we have some kind of um, let's say um, not not maybe market to ready product but uh, developed in the phase of uh, uh, solving the main technological technical uh, uh, issues in the project uh, also there is another pilot action which is connected uh, with, uh, with already market to uh, ready to market products and technologies where we will provide uh, support services uh, for uh, for entering uh, international supply chains and uh, sell markets so um, in this field we will have uh, our uh, experts for business and matchmaking services legal advising etc uh, which all with uh, will um, push the uh, the solutions from this area from croatia from poland and from norway to connect on the on the other markets and markets markets between so uh, already mentioned uh, smes researchers experts and in innovators are all our main beneficiaries uh, but also we would like to have large companies involved in the primary hub but also in pilot activities where um, a collaboration with smes um, will be necessary for large companies. Uh, so also other interested parties uh, in this uh, project are port authorities, business support organizations uh, of uh, employers and industrialist federations, productivity centers and clusters, funding institutions, 
state and public institutions and uh, NGOs. Um, we would like uh, to have them also as users of our hub, but also as a participants in uh, different fields of project imp implementation, organization of uh, different events, and uh, also in pushing uh, the uh, pushing out, out uh, our recommendations from this project through this uh, especially uh, public uh, institutions. Um, just quickly on the timeline, so uh, everybody who is interested in joining us can uh, have expectations. Uh, we have an uh, online uh, hub uh, start date at May 2021. Uh, so um, after that, uh, you will be able to use it in full functional version. Uh, also, in between April and September of next year, we plan to implement uh, many networking activities and those already mentioned study visits. Uh, this will surely depend on the COVID situation and how we will, we will implement those activities. Uh, and uh, from the May 2021 until the February 2023, we will be providing those uh, pilot activities that are already mentioned. Um, how can you join us? We, please follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn page, which is already online. So uh, there will be also uh, every, every announcement of the project activity will be able there. Uh, so also um, participants from today's webinar who clicked to be uh, contacted later will be uh, contacted and uh, get newsletters uh, about our next activities. We are having the plenary sessions uh, at the beginning of the next year. Also, some other communication and educational activities and events will be implemented very soon. So uh, we will be uh, on time informed on this. Uh, as I mentioned, the online registration is uh, in a uh, digital hub is preconditioned in participation in the, our pilot programs. So when the hub will be enabled and started, uh, you will be noticed about that, and we will appreciate you uh, for you to join us in uh, in this digital platform. Uh, also, I would like to invite you to share our project with the people who might be interested, uh, and we would like to have uh, as many as possible uh, key players and interested parties in a specific area of Croatia and uh, Norway and Poland, but also from the other countries to join us and uh, to be part of this story. So this is briefly on uh, what uh, what uh, what are uh, the main activities and what uh, what are what can be the expectations from uh, from companies uh, and uh, other uh, other stakeholders of this project. So uh, I hope we, I hope that we will see you uh, even in uh, personally in following months and the years. Thank you. Thank you, Boyan, for this interesting presentation. You actually showed uh, one of the most important part of our project, uh, which is uh, it is tailored expertise. Uh, I received one very interesting question, uh, so maybe you can give an answer because it's linked with the pilot action. Uh, okay. So uh, our colleague from uh, Norway, Anders, uh, is asking what tier level are we looking for what about if on your in your opinion what is the best uh, trl level to start uh, uh, to talk with the company in this case in this project i know that we were talking about trl six uh, or seven but uh, your experience uh, yeah i think that uh, actually uh, during the project implementation uh, selection criteria, I don't think it will be a terrible ter uh, level of uh, idea or innovation, uh, but mainly we will focus uh, on, uh, uh, on other elements of those ideas, like uh, a market opportunity, like uh, 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 possibility of transnational cooperation, uh, uh, Etc. So um, for TRL level, um, we will surely 
push those uh, from uh, six, seven, uh, but also ideas which are in early phase of development uh, and need some, some uh, let's say, uh, technical expertise in, the, uh, in uh, solving problems in the um, uh, early, early phases are also welcome. So I don't think that, will be, that there will be any restriction in, in this matter. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we are actually not uh, not restricting. Uh, so we are basically open, as you said, for good ideas, uh, and we are looking for the companies who are actually want to develop and want to research, want to innovate, and on that way to help them. Uh, and but thank you very much, Bojan. That was uh, last question from uh, from a panelist. Uh, I received one additional question, but this, I think it's more linked to Per and Pero. Uh, but uh, Bojan, maybe you can also jump or Marek. So the question was following. Uh, do we have any suggestion to cities uh, who are working on development of the strategy uh, and they have the port in the city. Uh, so do you have any suggestion what to include in strategy, uh, what uh, should be included, uh, what to think you know, in that sector? It's uh, very interesting because now if we take into account that uh, developing process uh, from the strategy to real life is like 10 to 20 years, and if we are looking for 2050 for preparing a lot of electric vessels or hydrogen vessels, uh, what to, to, to look, what to prepare, how to you know, set up any, any comment, any idea, Pero and uh, Per, you are, I'm, uh, we can say you are more expert in this field. I would say that uh, Per could give a better, uh, better answer. I can start with uh, the it will be definitely necessary to, to have some kind of a survey, what kind of uh, ships uh, uh, will enter those ports. And uh, based on that study, the decisions can be made. There is no point of making a strategy uh, without, uh, knowing, without knowing the, what kind of ships will enter, what kind of uh, fuel, uh, either uh, batteries, uh, hydrogen, or anything else will be used. Maybe Per, you have some other uh, comments. Well, but so. what comes to my what comes to my mind is actually uh, what we see um, coming from the EU Commission uh, EU uh, guidance. Uh, if you look at uh, the Green Deal, uh, they have a one part which is green ports. Um, we have a lot of guidance what they really want uh, to happen in projects um, in in that area, and also the new. Horizon Europe program seven year uh, framework is also telling me at least a lot about uh, what EU wants to see happen. So these are typically a four year project, four or five year project. And we'll, um, we'll make sure that we go in the right direction in the speed that is uh, wanted. And taking an, an example from the Olesen city where we are based. Uh, we are now uh, establishing a group of um, uh, partners looking at the whole infrastructure uh, with the, the Olesund port in the center. What kind of uh, shipping uh, are we talking about? What kind of uh, power sources, uh, power production? Uh, what kind of uh, hydrogen uh, sources, uh, ammonium? Uh, bio, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we're trying to establish a, a complete picture for the shipping industry to better understand what will be required up against the the guidance from uh, the EU and also the national, which follows the the same strategy. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's very good explanation. And I have one last question. Uh, I think it's pair for you. Uh, it's uh, linked with uh, charging of these electric uh, ferries uh, and ships. So in our case, for example, in Croatia, uh, we, are on, we have a lot of islands and the ferries are connecting islands. Uh, 
Uh, do you have experience from Norway how to charge? What are you doing at the moment with the charging these uh, ships? When we take into account uh, that uh, electric cars creating uh, small problems, we skipped uh, uh, trucks and we switched to the uh, ferries. So we move from the small charging points to the to the big charging. Uh, Point. So your experience from Norway. Well, that's a that's a continuous uh, continuing uh, discussion and uh, challenge. And I mentioned also in my presentation um, that uh, you know bringing uh, the required power to do the charging of ferries, as an example, is really one of the big challenges in many. Uh, port areas uh, for the uh, ferry crossings in Norway. So uh, it's a, it's a cost of uh, it's it's a matter of of cost. Uh, you can you can provide the power, but it has a price. Okay. So that's all, always the balance. Um, in islands, um, there may be some uh, local production. Of course, hydrogen is is a potential. Uh, power source uh, which you can produce uh, by wind power as an example so we will see a lot of those um, alternative uh, power production uh, in in the future and what about using the old batteries for the charging uh, on the islands you know as a balancing do you have experience with that in norway did you use uh, somewhere so instead of uh, throwing your old batteries you create uh, on the island place uh, where you use that old batteries as a storage point uh, for your charging. So do you have experience with that in Norway? Did you use somewhere something um, like that? I'm not aware of that, uh, Boris. I personally, uh, that's into the technology uh, field. Uh, okay. I'm not uh, deeply into so, um, and I cannot come up with uh, some specific uh, examples on that, sorry. So when uh, when city is actually developing, uh, like uh, in this case, where we have the question, the strategy for the city and with the port. So charging is uh, one one very big uh, or one very interesting problem, uh, which will be which we need to solve. And uh, I think that they need to focus on uh, on that problem or to check at least situation what is uh, in the port. So uh, I think that we answered on all questions from uh, our uh, attendees. Uh, after the end of webinar, we will send the uh, presentation uh, to all participants in order to have possibility to check and uh, they can ask uh, questions. And I hope that uh, uh, Many of our uh, attendees will uh, join our hub and have a uh, opportunity to receive, uh, how to say, mentorship from uh, our experts in development of uh, their products. Because I saw that uh, there is there are also, there are questions about uh, what the TRL levels we are looking and things like that. So project is interesting. Uh, field is very interesting, so I hope that we will uh, uh, engage a lot of stakeholders and uh, to give uh, uh, help to for them to develop uh, new products, to enter the new market, and to have uh, uh, possibilities to cooperate with uh, other stakeholders and partners. So maybe for the end, one last sentence by all presenters, and we can close. Uh, our webinar, it's almost two hours of the webinar. So uh, maybe Boyan, Per, Pero, and Barbara, and then Marek, one last sentence uh, and uh, to close the webinar. Okay, last sentence. Uh, I'm very, very uh, pleased that we had uh, lots of attendees today. And I think this topic will be hot in the next uh, few years, especially regarding the horizon plans for uh, pushing up zero emission vessels uh, in devel uh, development of uh, those technologies. So um, I, I'm looking forward to work uh, uh, together with all of you. Thank okay. you. Pero, 
Yes, I'm also looking forward for seeing for seeing you. Some of uh, some of you I have uh, seen during some preparation of other projects, and there'll be several years that I haven't saw a lot of you. And uh, I hope that I see many many others, many new uh, faces from other companies that uh, will be, let's say. Uh, that will uh, give us uh, their ideas, their uh, problems, and uh, I think that together we will be able to, to to solve a lot of issues and to let's say uh, bring uh, uh, bring our ideas towards some solutions towards market uh, market, and uh, um, I hope that uh, together we will also. Uh, apply for some, uh, let's say, serious uh, funds and uh, stuff like that. So I'm very looking forward the, to, especially the the pilot uh, pilot project. Okay, thank you, Pedro. Pet, your last yes. word. <laughs> I'll be quick. Uh, no, it's uh, it's good to get started for real, actually, uh, and it's good also to see that we still have uh, close to fifty. Uh, participants uh, on this um, webinar, uh, even on over time. Uh, this tells me that we have um, uh, an audience which uh, finds uh, what we we are aiming for uh, of interest. So we'll be uh, hope we will do our best to excite them also going forward. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Barbara. Yeah. Um... It's, as said before, uh, it's very nice to see that still people are here and that means that this is something that they also see important. This project touches upon very important topics, both uh, when it goes to the sustainability and also when it comes to innovation and economic growth. So uh, this is something that I think is important and look forward to work with everyone. And uh, thank you, Barbara and Marek. Just uh, one or two sentences last. Uh, one sentence. Uh, uh, in my opinion, this pro this project is very important. It is not only good idea, but uh, we uh, we are working in uh, the times. Then uh, uh, in Asia, uh, fifteen countries has created a strong organization, a strong organization, and uh, I think that uh, our project helps us not only. Uh, knowledge transfer, but uh, helps us uh, 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 closer connection with our market. Because uh, if you know, I give an example of our production, but uh, you know that uh, a lot of our ship owners uh, created uh, um, our uh, created a new market. Uh, and new uh, ships uh, 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 buys uh, by in uh, Chinese or Korean market. I think that uh, we must create a group, and this project is a chance to create a group which uh, helps our shipyards, our uh, uh, design offices, and uh, our uh, uh, producers of uh, uh, parts to ships to cooperate with uh, 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 Scandinavian and uh, Mediterranean markets. Thank you. Okay, so just one sentence at the end. I just want to thank you all uh, participants, panelists, attendees. And I hope that we will have opportunity to have physical uh, workshops and one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings because uh, webinars are okay, but uh, when you when we all sitting in the one room and uh, starting conversation, it's much much better compared to this. But at the moment, uh, only options are webinars. So thank you all for the presentation, for the listening. Thank you all for the questions, and I hope that. Uh, we'll have opportunity for the future cooperation. So thank you and bye-bye. Uh, thank you and thank we you. invite to direct contacts. Thank you, bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah.